Barnaby Jones, a Quinn Martin production. Starring Buddy Epson. Also starring Lee Merriweather. Mark Shera. With guest stars Diane Baker, Alan Fudge, Michael Ebert. Tonight's episode, The Wife Beater. Is he drinking again? Yes. I've never seen him this bad before. I'm afraid. I'm afraid he's going to kill me. Pat, I want you to hang up. I'm going to call the police. No, Betty, please. Please, just come over here. I'm sure that once you're here, you'll be fine. But for how long, honey? Until I leave? Pat, you've got to do something. Who are you talking to? Get off the phone! Betty, please! I said get off the phone! You don't know what I was just thinking. I was in the bathroom and I, I didn't hear you come in. Honey, are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Glenn passed out uh, just after I talked to you. I, I tried to call you back, but you'd already left. Come on, let's uh, find your suitcase and I'll help you put some things together. What for? You, you don't think I'm going to let you stay here alone with him, do you? You're going to stay with me. That's sweet of you, Betty, but... Uh... Everything's all right now. All right? A few minutes ago, you thought he was going to kill you. That's because he was drunk. Uh, by tomorrow morning, he'll have forgotten all about it. Honey, he has no right to abuse you. Pat, will you look at your face? I have looked at it, Betty, and I'm sorry you had to see me this way. You have to do something. What, Betty? Just walk out on him like he didn't exist. Every day is another disappointment for him. And he just doesn't know what to do about it. I know you're only trying to help me, but I just can't walk out on him. I can't let him wake up and, and not find me here. I guess I can't force you to come with me. But you've got to promise me that you're going to see me tomorrow. We'll have lunch. Maybe we can figure something out. I'd like that. Thank you for caring. Maybe it's none of my business, but from what Betty told me, maybe um, I ought to do something about your situation. 
Mr. Jones, it really isn't that serious. Betty is exaggerating. Those dark glasses you're wearing uh, hiding Betty's exaggeration? Well, it... well, he just hit me, that's all. He lost his temper. Pat, last night when you called me, you were terrified. If he hadn't passed out, who knows what he might have done. That won't happen again, Betty. How can you say that? He's not going to stop drinking. And every time he gets drunk, he beats you. Is that true, Pat? Yes. That's true, and I... I don't know what to do about it. Betty tells me that you won't call the police. Do you know what a humiliation that would be for him? He's a sensitive man, not some common criminal. What about a marriage counselor? Glenn believes family problems should be kept inside the home. Maybe you ought to worry about yourself a little more instead of Glenn. No matter how much you love him, a man who beats his wife is obviously disturbed. I know. Maybe you ought to get professional help before it's too late. I wouldn't even know who to go to. Well, I have a friend, uh, Dr. Dover. He's a psychologist. He specializes in marriage problems. Betty could give you his number if you call the office. All right, I'll, I'll talk to Glenn about going. No, I'm going to make him go if I have to drag him there myself. That's a start. I guess I better start to get the check, which is probably the reason I was invited along in the first place. <laughs> Hi, Pat. Oh, David. Betty, you remember my boss, David Conrad? Sure. I certainly do. Hi. Betty's father-in-law, Barnaby Jones. Oh. How do you do, sir? Good to meet you. You can put away the whip. I was just going back to the office. Oh, no, take your time. How's that for training a boss? Uh, you want to tell me your secret? <laughs> oh, we really were just finished. Thank you very much, Mr. You're Jones. Welcome. Good luck. Appreciate it. Thank you. Very nice meeting you, Mr. Jones. Very happy to meet you, sir. Bye. 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 <sighs> oh, I hope she can get Glenn to go. Yeah. Betty. When I was much younger, I once tried to separate two brothers who were fighting. You know what happened? They both turned against me. Is that your way of telling me not to get involved? No. Just be careful. By the way, Glenn called right after you left the office. Did he say what he wanted? No, he just asked if I knew where you were having lunch. I told him I didn't, but uh, I don't think he believed me. Why do you say that? Oh, it's just something in his voice. <laughs> I think he suspected that you and I were having lunch together. Poor Glenn. He always makes everything so complicated. Well, I've decided we're going to see a marriage counselor. Oh, really? Pat, if you want any time off, you know you've got it. Thanks, David. You know, I still say that some men have got all the luck. If you were my wife, Pat, I'd... <laughs> What's the use of talking about it? You know what I mean. What's that for? For making things so much easier. Sure. Come on. Mr. Halston, according to a conversation I had with your wife earlier, she describes your marriage as a little more than bumpy. Really? What did you say, Pat? Just that we argued. Sometimes uh, you got drunk and, and hit me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. It is true. It's all true. I throw myself on the mercy of the court. This isn't a court, Mr. Halston, you know that. I should at least have the opportunity to defend myself. Pat, how many years have we been married? Almost ten. And in those years, have you been happy? You know I have. And how many times have I hit you? I don't know. Not many. Well, then what are we talking about? Doctor... My old man was a violinist. 
I don't mean professionally. He wanted to be. Maybe he wasn't good enough. I, I don't know. So instead, he sold hardware, hammers, nails, things like that. And sometimes when it would get to be too much for him, he would go out and have a few drinks, and he would come home drunk, and he would hit my mother. But not out of hate, out of love. And she understood this. She knew it was the only way that he could, that he could ease that pain. And so she loved him. In spite of what he did to her, she loved him until the day he died. Can you understand that, Doctor? You are an engineer, aren't you, Mr. Halston? I was. I sell hard. I sell real estate now. It's the same thing, only bigger. And why did you give up engineering? The firm I was with was hit by the recession. I was one of many they laid off. <clears throat> I'd like to see you both twice a week in the beginning. Twice a week? Where am I going to get the time? Glenn, you promised me. That's right. I swore I would try. Try. We'll be getting back to you, Doctor. Mrs. Halston, for your own sake, see that he gets help. If he doesn't like me, go to someone else, but go to someone. I'm not, I'm not sure I understand. Your husband's a very disturbed man, Mrs. Halston. Take my word for it. He's a bomb waiting to explode. And here it is. The only bridge ever to span a relish tray. Stress factor, one green olive. <laughs> That's fantastic. Someday you'll be building the real thing instead of sticks and chewing gum. <laughs> well, after all, a fellow who won, uh, let's see, two student engineering awards in his junior year. You remember that, Betty? Remember it? I covered this story for the college paper. Well, that was a long time ago. But I haven't given up yet. Just give me time. And, uh, <clears throat> yes, speaking of time, I've got to be up at the crack of dawn tomorrow. <laughs> sure you won't stay and eat something with us, Betty? Oh, no, thanks. Listen, it's your night to be together. <laughs> uh, but uh, thank you for the wine. Good night. Good night. Uh, I think we'd better order something before it's too late. Hey, beautiful. Don't worry. I told you from now on, one is my letter. Well, look who's here. David! David, come join us. Hello, oh, Glenn. Hi, Pat. Oh, sit down, sit down. What are you drinking? Uh, this is it. I gotta get back to work. What, at this hour? Well, I've just been catching up on a few things, and uh, I just thought I'd take a little break. Well, that is what I call dedication. But I guess that's what it takes to stay on top. In my company, that's what it takes to keep your job. <laughs> I guess that's why women find you so attractive. Now, now, don't be modest, David. They love winners. You are a winner. Now, take Pat here. Glenn. I don't think a day goes by that she doesn't tell me how successful you are. Glenn, that's not true. But does she ever tell you about me, David? I mean, why I'm selling houses instead of building bridges? Now that is interesting. Glenn, maybe some other time. No, it won't take long. You see, I could have gone on to graduate school, but then something unexpected came up. Right, Pat? Glenn. Pat, I'll see you tomorrow in the office. Good night, Glenn. Why do you always have to spoil everything? Spoil? Just because I wanted to tell him why I couldn't finish my education? 
Well, I thought since you two were so close. We're not close. I'm his friend. I work for him. Work? Is that what you call it? Hey, you know what? I need another drink. If you have another drink, I'm leaving. Waiter? Double martini on the rocks. Len, please, let's go. You're not going anywhere. Then people are looking. Let them look. I want to hear about you and David. <laughs> Take me long to pack some things. Listen, why don't we go with you? Okay. Glenn? He must still be sleeping. You handling this for the insurance company he worked for? No, oh, you might say I'm uh, working for Betty on this one. It's personal. Part of me, there's nothing personal about murder. You've got something. I don't want you holding out on me. Well, everything that I got would come under the heading of suspicion. If you get some proof, you'll be the first to know. Betty? JR? Okay. See you later. Well, one of you, what'd you find out? They think he was murdered by a mugger who waited for him outside of his office last night. A mugger? His wallet was gone, his watch, his college ring. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, Pat, but there's not the slightest bit of evidence that connects Glenn to this. I only hope you're right. Where is Glenn? He should be at, at work. Where's work? Coronet Real Estate Company. Jedediah and I will have a talk with him. I better go upstairs. The office will be in a madhouse. I'll call you later. Glenn! I've got to talk to you, Pat. I want to apologize about last night. What I did to your wedding dress. Wedding dress? Don't you know what happened to David last night? Pat, you don't think I had anything to do with that? Oh, come on. Pat, how long have you known me? Not very long. Not the way you've become. You honestly think I could kill someone? No. But I don't know what to believe anymore. 
All I know is that I've just got to get away from you for a while. I've got to have time to think. Where will you go? I'm staying at Betty's. Honey, if that's what you want, that's fine with me. Just so you know that I love you. Glenn, please, not now. Maybe you'd like to see something else, huh? You Morning. Morning. Well, I can see this is just the house you're looking for. Now, this is the house, all right, but uh, we're looking for the salesman, uh, Glenn Halston. They told us at the real estate office that we'd find him here. Well, uh, they told you wrong. He was supposed to be here almost two hours ago. Uh, I'm Sid Markham. Glenn works for me. Uh, what did you want to see him about? Well, I'm afraid this is personal, Mr. Markham. Oh, yeah. Sure. Why not? It's only on my time. Here comes His Majesty now. Where have you been? Sid, I, I'm sorry. Sorry? Sorry doesn't sell houses. You had three prospective buyers lined up for this morning. You missed all of them. I'll call them all back, Sid. I'll set up new appointments. Yeah, you do that. And before you take off tonight, I want to see you in my office. I'll be there. Mr. Jones, right? Betty's father-in-law? I met you at a 4th of July picnic a couple of years ago. You've got a terrific memory. This is my associate, Jedediah Jones. What can I do for you? Did you know that David Conrad was murdered last night? I heard something about that on the radio. I figured I'd be a suspect sooner or later, but I didn't kill him. Well, according to the police, uh, the murder took place at about 10 o'clock. Where were you at that time? <laughs> Trying to forget where I was at that time. Unless you have a pretty good alibi, I'm going to have to tell the police how you felt about Conrad. Have you ever heard of a place called Mully's Bar? How long were you there? About an hour. And then I went to the Red Sail, and then to a place called the Sombrero. We used to refer to that as bar hopping. How did you bruise your hand? I, I don't know. I must have banged against something. Sure it wasn't Conrad? I told you I didn't kill him. And you won't mind if we check out those bars you were in last night? No. Why should I? No reason. No reason at all. Do you remember when you took this, Betty? No. Palm Springs. We were happy then. This hour, that could only be Barnaby. Or Robert Redford. Yes, who is it? Betty, it's Glenn. I'd like to talk to Pat. Um, well, I'm sorry, Glenn. Uh, Pat's resting. I won't stay long. Glenn, it's no use. It's important. Betty, it's all right. What is it, Glenn? I, I just, I just had to talk to you. Uh, see, I, I haven't had a drink. I'm not drunk. I know, but it just got so lonely at home without you. I tried not thinking about it, but how do you not think about somebody you love? I don't want to talk about it anymore. Just let me in, just for a second, no, no, honey. Please, please now, don't, don't, don't close the door me. on me. If you don't leave, Glenn, I'm going to call the police. I have to talk to you, Pat. <sighs> Pat, you've got to listen to me. I'm no stranger. I'm your husband. You're my wife. I'm afraid of you. There's no reason to be anymore. Honey, I know what's going to save our marriage. It's not staying apart. It's getting together again. It's too late. Pat, let's have a baby. A baby? We always talked about it. I was just afraid of the responsibility. But, honey, I'm not afraid anymore. Do you know what having a baby means? Do you have any idea? 
means we'd be a real family. We'd have someone to care about, someone to love. Something that was a part of the two of us. It's not that easy. I'm not saying it's that easy. I'm saying we could handle it. Honey, we love each other. That's half the battle. Glenn. Honey, we got all these years invested. They're happy years. You said so yourself. I've got to give it just one more chance. Hi. I've got to, Betty. Don't you see that I have to? That's it. Once she agreed to go home with him, he was fine. Regular Jekyll and Hyde. Hello, Glenn Halston. Anybody in? Speak of the devil. Come in. Hi. I'm uh, sorry to bust in this way. I just wanted to apologize to you for last night. I've already talked to the manager of your place, and he says he will fix the door and send me the bill. Thank you. I also wanted to apologize to you, Mr. Jones, for the trouble I've caused you. But everything is going to be different now. I've taken the pledge. I'm not going to drink anymore. Also, uh, Pat and I are going to start seeing that marriage counselor twice a week. Well, that's very nice. I'm glad to hear that. However, there is one problem, Glenn. What's that? Those bars that you said you were in the other night, we checked them out and only found one bartender at the Sombrero who remembers seeing you. He said you came in around 12 o'clock. Conrad was murdered a couple hours earlier. Well, you know what they say, after the third drink, all bars look alike. I don't think you fully realize the seriousness of your situation. I can't continue to withhold information from the police. Sooner or later, they're going to find out how you felt about Conrad. Now, where were you between 10 and 12? I honestly don't remember, Mr. Jones. Man, when I tie one on, I really do a job. <laughs> but that's all in the past. All I want to do now is to make Pat happy. I'm even planning on taking her to Hawaii for our anniversary. She'd like that. See, my company is giving free tickets to whoever makes the most sales over the next two months. And you are looking at the future winner. Well, I, uh, better get started. See y'all. You know, Burnaby, I really want to believe him. You sounded very convincing. Come on, he's a salesman, remember? You got a point, Jedediah. Now, while I continue checking out the bars, I want you and Betty to check out the uh, building which Conrad had his office. See if you can find anyone who might have seen Glenn there about the time of the murder. I was just about to suggest the same thing myself. I know, I know, Sid wants to see me. Oh, is it true he had open heart surgery and they found he didn't have one? That's it. Contact your travel agent. Have to fill the names in on these Hawaii tickets to Mr. and Mrs. Glenn Halston. They are first class, aren't they? I told you I wanted to see you before you took off last night. Yeah, I know. I had some business I had to attend to. It's personal. You can understand that, can't you, Sid? Sure. Why not? I mean, I'm human like everybody else, right? I got a wife, three kids. I even got a dog. <laughs> you know what else I got, Glenn? High blood pressure, ulcers, and my doctor tells me I'm working on a coronary. You know what he prescribes? He says I should get rid of all my aggravations. And you, Glenn, are one of my biggest. I know I let you down lately, Sid. It's just, well, I've been under these pressures. We're not machines, Sid. We all break down. 
All of us. But it's going to be different from now on. I'm going to sell more houses than anybody out there. Not for me, you're not. You're through. Hey, come on, Sid. You don't mean through. What did you think? I was going to make you sales manager. Glenn, 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 you know what your trouble is? You're a boozer. You drink too much and everybody knows it. You're not only through here, you're washed up all over town. I'm not going to drink anymore, Sid. I give you my word. It's too late for that. Hey, come on, Sid. You got to give me just one more chance. Please. Just give me one more chance. I, I promised my wife. I'm sorry, Glenn. I got a business to run here. Look, uh... I got a lot of work to do, and, uh... Why don't you... clean out your desk? Yeah. <clears throat> I want to leave anything behind. Any luck? Only that my feet haven't given up. I stopped in to see Pat. How is she? Well, she's fine. She's looking forward to going to that marriage counselor tonight. Mm, that's good. Uh, I've never seen him around here before. Think he had something to do with the burglary? What burglary? What burglary? I thought that was why you're here. Someone broke into my shop night before last and stole a dozen of my best cameras. The night of the murder? That's right. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a connection somewhere. And you reported this to the police? Yeah, about an hour ago. Well, why'd you wait so long? Because I just found out about it. You see, when I found the cameras missing, I thought my partner had taken them on the road with him to sell. When he got back this morning, I found out he hadn't touched them. That's when I realized what happened. He just made a copy of the serial numbers to get to the police. Uh, Mr. Keller, do you mind if we borrow one of these? If it'll help get my cameras back, be my guest. Well, thank you. Yes, thank you. for you tonight. After we come back from the counselor, I'm going to fix you your favorite dinner. Then we're going to put on some records. And I'll light those pretty candles that I bought. <laughs> I guess it isn't any surprise anymore, is it? But it'll be like when we were first married. Glenn? Glenn, are you all right? I got cam today. What? You heard me, I got... I got fired! Oh, no. Why? Because of you. Me? That's right. First, I blamed myself. Then I realized, if you hadn't caused me all those problems, Pat, threatening to leave me, then I could have concentrated on my job and done better work. You know, that's not true. Hey, Dad, you have been the source of all of my problems. I could have gone to graduate school. I could be a good engineer now if you hadn't tricked me into marrying you. Tricked you? That's right, by telling me you were pregnant. But, but I, I was pregnant. Oh, well, then what happened? W what happened? I had a miscarriage. You think I believe that, Pat? Believe it? What are you talking about? I know that you made that all up so that I would make it all legal. Oh, my God. Oh. I have known it all along. The, the pregnancy, 
The miscarriage, it was all a lie. A trick. You poor, sick man. Oh, no. I have had an albatross around my neck. Well, I'm gonna get rid of it. Now! Stay away from me and I mean it. You're never going to touch me again, never. Pat. No! I'm leaving you for good. I'm, I'm getting a divorce. I see. Well, you have all the serial numbers of the cameras. If one of them does come in, I'd appreciate a call. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's a 35 millimeter F28. Yeah, serial number is 31792G. Okay. Well, you can call us here anytime. Thanks. Mr. Harrington, Four Star Loan Company. We took in eight cameras in the last two days, not one of them from the Keller burglary. Are there any more pawn shops we haven't called yet? No, that was the last one. But if you ask me, we are wasting our time. You don't think there's any connection between the burglary and Conrad's murder? To tell you the truth, I don't know what I think, Barnaby. It's been a long day and I am really tired. What I'd like to do is go home, take a nice hot bath, and get a good night's sleep. So if you fellas don't mind turning off the lights when you leave, You will let me know if anything happens. Even if it means waking you from your long night's sleep? Just you try not waking me. I think she wants us to wake her. Barnaby Jones. Uh, Mr. Jones, this is Lou Sampson at Esquire Loans. Yes, Mr. Sampson. Those cameras you were asking about. Some guy just walked in here with one of them. He's still there? Yeah. We're on our way. Pat? What's wrong? What happened? Glenn was drunk when I came home. Betty, you were right. I've got to leave him for good. I just came by to pick up my things. Why, well, you're welcome to stay here. You know that. No, I know, but this will be the first place he'll look, and you know how he can be. Look, I I've, I've got to find a, a hotel somewhere. Um, maybe, maybe the marina. Oh, all right. Uh, I'll better call first, see if we can get a reservation. That's a 13528. Uh... Oh, how much? I could give you 35 bucks on it. Are you kidding? That camera's brand new. It's worth uh, three, four hundred dollars. Yeah, well, maybe to a photographer, but not to a pawnbroker. Now, you want the money or don't you? Forty-five. Is that gonna kill you? Forty bucks, take it or leave it. All right. Forty. Forty. Okay. Here. Yeah, you fill this out, okay? Hey, come on, the money, huh? Uh, it's in the back. I gotta get it. I was just, just closing. Uh, you just finish filling that out. Hey, hurry up. Okay. 
Looks like David Conrad's ring, Barnaby. It's got initials DC in here. Maybe you better call the police. Yeah, all right. Phone's in there. Thanks. Really, I appreciate it, but you don't have to go with me. I want to make sure you're checked into your room nice and safe. We got everything? you now, Pat. She just needs a little time by herself, Glenn, that's all. I told you, you weren't gonna leave. Never again! I didn't mean to kill him, but he saw me, so I had to hit him. Get him out of here. Well, I hope this straightens out that personal problem for you, Barnaby. It's gonna make some people feel a lot better. Thanks, Lieutenant. See you around. Barnaby, there's still no answer to Betty's. Did you try Pat's? That's what worries me. There's no answer there either. Let's get right over to Betty's. <laughs> Well, it's all right. We just got here ourselves. Here, let me help you. Thanks, JR. Oh, did you see Glenn? Yes. They have this small lake out there. We uh, took a walk by it. How is he? Relaxed, thoughtful. How long did the doctor say he'd have to be there? Six months, a year, maybe. Who knows? Pat, when he gets out, are you going back to him? I don't know. I guess a lot of it depends on him. And, uh, time? I just don't know. 
Well, why don't we order? Well, listen, Barnaby, I really don't have too much of an appetite. Too bad, Jedediah. It's my check. Your check? That's right. I'll start with some soup. Maybe have a salad later on. Hit the lasagna here. It's really terrific. The ravioli. Maybe have a lasagna in the ravioli.